showing different looks by attacking from a variety of places on the court is what good offenses do to keep a defense guessing. We'll examine five common actions the Raptors are using to create scoring opportunities within their half-court offense. With deception and misdirection, they're able to move defenses where they want them before unleashing their attack. With a versatile lineup full of size and scoring options, the Raptors are increasingly looking to throw the ball inside. Playing a combination of Siakam and OG with either Gasol or Ibaka usually results in at least one mismatch inside that they exploit with one-on-one -on -one attacks. The Raptors will also force the hand of the defense by playing a lot of two-man actions that result in switches and force even bigger mismatches. Playing out of the post by looking to attack favorable matchups has proven successful and has caused defenses to have to adjust. They're quick to send a second defender to the post up in order to neutralize it by forcing a kick out. Toronto has used these instances as a trigger to create opportunities in their offense to gain an even bigger advantage. A post up at best is a semi-contested two point finish in the paint. When an offense can use that to create an open look from outside or an uncontested finish at the rim, it has drastically improved its offensive efficiency. Well-timed and hard cuts keep the defense occupied and in a difficult spot to load up to the ball. OG knows that a second defender is coming once he turns baseline. With a patient and controlled dribble, he's able to evade the double team and create a better passing angle. Seeing that he's left unattended, Alice Jefferson makes a strong cut to open space for the paint finish. As OG's offensive repertoire grows, Toronto continues to look to expand the variety of ways and places that he receives the ball. Here they throw it to him at the foul line with the floor spaced and room to operate. With a smaller Bogdanovich on him, the Jazz have to send Royce O'Neal to help inside. Siakam becomes the beneficiary of a finish due to his spacing and timing. The Raptors are also using the low post as a starting point of attack to trigger their offense. As a facilitating area rather than a scoring one, Toronto has a whole new dimension to their offense from which they can look to initiate their attacks. This post action starts with Siakam setting a quick brush screen on OG's defender. Van Vliet then screens for Siakam to set up a cut to the basket and put pressure on the rim. To clean it all up, Lowry screens Van Vliet out to the perimeter. The Nets make a mistake in that they send two defenders to Van Vliet, leaving Lowry wide open at the top. The Raptors have used this action a number of times in the past. Even if they don't get a look out of it on the perimeter, the movement occupies the defense so that they're not able to put more bodies in the paint, which allows Siakam to operate one-on-one -on -one inside. When the ball is in the post, it means that it's behind the defense and in a place where teams are not comfortable or accustomed to guarding it. Even though he's just an average attacker off post-ups and has no intention of looking to score, Hollis Jefferson draws the attention of all four Pacers defenders off the ball by just holding it on the block. Lowry uses this opportunity to catch a ball watching Miles Turner with a quick screen and Ibaka gets a wide open three. Raptors continue to trade contested twos for clean threes. Next we'll look at the snap action that Toronto is using to spring shooters open on the perimeter and forcing defenses to have to make adjustments in their coverage. Following a pitch back to the point guard, the big, or Boucher in this case, sprints into a wide pin for a shooter coming out of the opposite corner. Because of the angle of the screen and the threat of the shooter, the defender has to trail and chase over the top, leaving enough daylight for Thomas to get a shot off. With a more connected trailing defender and a drop big, Powell curls a screen and receives the pass with room to attack downhill in what essentially becomes a one-on-one -on -one with the big. When defenses shortcut the screen and go under it, the Raptors are quick to flow and turn the action into a ball screen. Here, Thomas is able to find Boucher on the short roll with a pocket pass through two Bulls defenders. A variation to their typical snap action can be seen here where Toronto runs it as a big to big exchange as opposed to a big guard wide pin. They then have Boucher set a goal screen on the ball and pop to space for an open three. A great action against the hedging defense of the Bulls. The next variation is different in that it uses Lowry as the screener and a big or Siakam as the cutter. The initial look is for a Siakam post up, but because he draws so much attention on his cut, Lowry is left open and is able to take the advantage and create an even better look for OG in the corner. A couple different things happen on this last snap, 
As their first play of the game, they have Gasol set the standard wide pin for Lowry, but at the same time Siakam sets a screen on the ball for Van Vliet. The Nets negate the action by switching everything on the ball, including the quick brush screen by Lowry. The Raptors continue to move the ball and don't allow the defense to get set, which produces a wide open three after the shot fake by Lowry. Toronto likes to use staggered screens off the ball as another way to create space and shift the defense. This action starts with a stagger screen for Watson set by OG and Boucher. They then sprint into a second stagger for Thomas on the baseline. Even though the initial action doesn't yield an open look, we once again see the Raptors move the ball and continue to seek the best possible shot. On the reversal, the Raptors set a triple screen for Miller in the corner. The Nuggets try to get back in the play with the late switch, however a quality screen by Boucher at the end makes sure that Miller is left open for the shot. Running the on-ball defender on a baseline out of bounds off a stagger is a great way to catch him off guard. Levert pauses for a split second and it's enough separation for Van Vliet to get out to the three. Because a stagger screen draws so much attention, by combining it with a curl, the Raptors are able to also add pressure on the rim at the same time. These multiple actions stretch and occupy the defense that it creates space and driving lanes while also taking away help at the basket. Utilizing these opportunities, Raptors attackers are looking to put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop. They also like to pair a stagger action with a middle pick and roll. As soon as Siakam comes off the second screen, Gasol sprints into a ball screen. The action before the action has moved and shifted the D. Joe Harris has the responsibility to tag a soul on the roll, but because he was chasing Siakam off the screens, he's just far enough out of position and therefore late to get to a spot and cut off the roll. Shifting the defense before running your actual set is sometimes referred to as false action. Toronto runs a weave or a series of handoffs to set up a mid pick and roll. By having OG follow the ball, he's shorting the ball screen. This means that with him shifting to the short corner, the weak side of the defense has been distorted and leaves Booker to have to defend Powell on the perimeter and the rolling Siakam. With too much ground to cover, Booker is unable to take away a wide open layup for Siakam. This different angle gives us a better perspective on the amount of action that is happening pre-ball screen. Siakam is following the ball from behind the defense and his catch forces a collapse that creates a short opening on the perimeter. Getting a defense to scramble before actually attacking is a great way to create breakdowns and clean scoring opportunities. Another way to create clean looks is by attacking where and when the defense isn't expecting it. With a mid pick and roll, the Raptors are able to occupy the Nets defense by drawing their attention to the ball. With this sliver of daylight, Powell is able to run off the Ibaka baseline exit screen for a good look at a three. This action was so successful against the Nets that Toronto ran it from a baseline out of bounds with the handoff and still caught the defenders off guard. And finally, everybody remembers the dunk by Powell, but if we look closer, we see that the exit screen on the baseline created the advantage and space to allow him to get open and set up his attack for the emphatic finish. Having a variety of tools, both personnel and action-wise at their disposal, has allowed the Raptors to continue exploiting defenses in a variety of ways. The deeper into the playoffs they get, the more important their multifaceted attack will become. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notified when new videos are released. For access to full analysis and all of the content, check out our website at edubasketball.com. We'll see you next time.